What's up creators? I hope you all doing well. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're returning to the Edelag series where we break down the styles of famous YouTubers, photographers, Instagrammers, creators, filmmakers. <laughs> the style that we're going to break down today is Alex Pantella. Now this profile was suggested by Arno in a previous video in the comment section so if you have any suggestions for this series or for any video that you want me to make feel free to put it down in the comment sections and I'll be very keen to check them out. Okay. So you know how this works. First of all, we're going to jump into Instagram and break down his style, see what he does in the color gradient. And then we're going to go into Lightroom and try to replicate his style, create a preset out of it and see how it performs on different examples. So let's jump into it. So here we have Alex Pantella's profile on Instagram. Alex Pantella, just like that, if you want to go and follow him and support him. And he's a travel photographer from Cyprus. He also shoots a lot of landscapes. Now immediately we can see that his feet has a very warm tone in general. Most of his images either are shot at overcast days or at sunset. He's always avoiding the harsh contrast that is created by midday sun. Now consequence to shooting in sunsets and shooting in locations where well there's a warm environment or very arid is that his feet tends to be very warm. Other than that, in images that have some blues or have some cool tones, he completely desaturates them. So let's jump into some images in detail to see what he does. Now, first of all, we have this series where immediately we can see how the greens are alterated. We can see them that they're a bit desaturated and they're not tending towards the emeralds. Instead, they're tending towards the yellows and the oranges. So he's taking away a bit of the saturation in the greens, but also taking away a bit of the blues that make them those cool tones. He's taking them towards the oranges. Now, another thing that we can see in this series is the skin tones. The skin tones, obviously, they're not natural right here. They're very brown, they're very orangey and very tan. And this, you can do it in camera calibration and we're gonna do it further along. In this other sequence, we can see again, uh, just an example of what he does with the greens. Immediately, we can see that they're not very natural, they're very warm and they're very desaturated, but also we can see the shadows. The shadows, well, these parts should be completely black and they're a bit faded out. This is done in the tone curve. So he's lifting the blacks, so we have these grayish uh, air, dark areas in our image. Then in this other one, I can notice that we don't have any tones added in the color grading department or in split tone if you have an older version of the program because in the dark part of the road over here, we don't see any tone added. Normally in profiles that add maybe a blue tone, maybe a green tone, it's very apparent in the dark parts of the image, in particular when you add a vignette just like here. Also in the highlights, like in the sky in the background, we don't see any specific tint added. So it's a very natural edit apart from all the desaturation that he adds. Again, the greens over here are very desaturated and tend towards the warm tones. So those are the images that contain some greens. But for example, these types of landscapes where there's no green because we're above the tree line in the mountain in Tenerife, immediately we can see how the sky is completely desaturated. We don't have a single hint of blue in the sky and the highlights are dimmed down so you can see the the complete detail in the moon on the background. Also notice how there's a lot of information in the dark parts of the mountain which are already covered by the shadow itself of the mountain and that's telling me that he's lifting the shadows as well. So as a consequence we have a very flat image. He's reducing the highlights to have more information in the sky and then bringing up the shadows to have more information in the dark parts. Now if we scroll down in his feed we can find that his style varies a bit depending on the location. For example, this image in Playa de Papagayo, we can notice how the blues have a lot more saturation than in the previous examples. That's because, well, he has uh, the sea over here and the sky that compose large parts of the image, I'd say the majority of his image, so it would be unnatural to, for them to not have a hint of blue. They're a bit more saturated, but not completely natural. So the sky, we can see that it's a bit blue, and also the ocean. But in general, it's the same edit. It's just a little variant on his style. Okay, great. So I think I have everything I need to replicate his style. As a quick recap, what we want to do, first of all, is create a flatter image so it has a more detail in the shadows and in the highlights. For that, we're going to bring down the highlights, bring up the shadows and fade out the blacks. Then in camera calibration, we want to create those tan or orangey skin tones. And finally, in HSL, we're going to desaturate basically all the cool tones while the greens and the yellows tend towards the warmer tones. So it's not a very complex edit in my opinion, but we're gonna create a little variant on it for those images that maybe are shot in a lake or at sea. So we're gonna jump into Lightroom, but before that guys, I'm gonna remind you that these two presets are gonna be added into the Edelac preset pack V2. In case you wanna support me in that preset pack, we're gonna add all the presets that we create throughout this series and you can skip basically a lot of time in my tutorials. Also, you can find the Edelac preset pack V1 where I have more than 60 something presets that we created in the past in this series as well. So in case you wanna support me, check them out. Up there is the link. Now let's jump into Lightroom and start editing. 
Okay, creators, here in Lightroom, I have all these images that I think would work perfectly with Alex's style. So we're gonna start off with this one. Hit D on your keyboard to go to the Develop tab and start editing. Okay, so when editing, I always like to go from top to bottom, starting out with the exposure and contrast and then moving down all the way to the color grading tools. Now, first of all, we have temperature, tint, exposure, and contrast. These four values, I don't like to tamper with them. These are the ones I like to leave at zero and not include them in the preset because these are the values that I'm gonna use to adjust the preset to different photographs. Some of them are shot with different white balance or some of them are underexposed or overexposed and these four elements, I like to move them to adjust our image and correct it before we apply the preset. Okay, so let's start off with the highlights. First of all, we want a flatter image like we said. So we're gonna bring down the highlights towards the negatives, not too much, otherwise the image is completely fat and we don't wanna go all the way down to the extremes but around a minus 45 is gonna be enough. So we have more information in bright parts of the image. And in the shadows, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna pull it up so we have more information in dark parts. Now, if we go to the negatives, our image becomes a lot more contrasty. But in this case, we want to go to the positives, somewhere around the plus 35s. Now, the whites control the brightest parts of our image, and we're gonna pull it down just a bit around the minus 10. It's gonna be enough. Meanwhile, the blacks will control the darkest parts of the image, and we're gonna just add a bit more contrast into our image by pulling it down towards the negatives around the minus 20 is gonna be just fantastic. Now, for this edit, we're not gonna use presence. We're not gonna use texture, nor clarity, nor dehaze. These values, well, in this case, they're not very relevant in his style. His style is very clean, although he does desaturate a lot of his colors. So we're gonna move down to the tone curve. Now, the tone curve is one of the most advanced tools within Lightroom, just like camera calibration and color grading, and I already made tutorials about them, dedicated tutorials about them. So if you wanna check it out, link up here to those three videos. Now, one question that pops up quite frequently is that why can't you add any points into the tone curve? And that's because you're using the wrong tone curve. If you look up here under adjust, we have several little dots or several options. The first one is the parametric tone curve, which allows us to correct the exposure on our image, but we cannot create points to create a, a specific style. So this one is the parametric one, but if we look closely to the right of this one, we have the point tone curve where we can add the points to create a specific style. So this is the one that I use mostly on my tutorials. So I'm gonna create a point in the shadow and a point in the highlights, and then the shadows, I'm just gonna drag it down below the diagonal just to add a bit more contrast. And then the blacks, I'm just gonna pull them up to fade them up. Not too much, we don't wanna go to the extreme towards uh, this type of edit where our image is completely gray. We want to go just a bit high just to fade out those blacks and bring out a lot of information in dark parts of the image. So with Y on our keyboard, we can see the before and after. And this is how it's looking, just with our exposure and contrast corrections. Now our image has a bit less of overexposure we, because we reduce the whites and the highlights. That's why we, we have more detail in the brightest parts of our image. And we did the same in the shadows. And now we have blacks that are faded out. We can see that they're not as black as in the original image. Now they're a bit more faded. Okay, now let's move on to color grading. Now we're gonna start off with camera calibration. And this tool allows us to control the RGB, the red, the green, and the blue, which conform every single pixel that we can see in our digital images. So this is a very important and powerful tool. In this one, we have two objectives. The first one is to achieve those tan skin tones. And the second one is to take the most of the colors on our image towards the warmer side. So I'm gonna zoom into the skin because it's gonna be our main subject. And the first thing I want to do is move the green primary towards the negatives. If we move it towards the positives, we can see that we add a lot more magentas and a lot more emeralds into the image. We don't wanna to go to that extreme. We want to go to the negatives to add more warm tones. So I'm gonna go quite down in this case, quite hefty edit. Normally I don't like to go too harsh on camera calibration. Just adding a lot more oranges into the image and making in particular the greens a lot more warm. Next, I'm gonna to go to the red primary, and as you can see, if I go to the positives, I add more yellow into the reds, and if I go to the negatives, I add more purple or magenta. So in this case, I wanna to go to the positives with a value, just a subtle value towards the 12%, just to make the skin tones a bit more yellow. Next, the blue primary. Now, this one is very important to achieving those tan skin tones. Why? Because the blue primary is direct opposite to the oranges in the color wheel. If we go down to color grading over here, you can see that in the color wheel, we have the blues on one side and in the other, we have the oranges and the yellows, the colors that we want to attain in the skin tones. Now, by reducing the blue primary, the oranges and the yellows will lighten up. And why? Because the direct opposites, they're complementary colors, but they're also opposites. So by adding 
some negative into a blue primary, you can see how the oranges really start to dominate in our image a lot more. So you have to keep that in mind. This is a great way to create the teal and orange look, by the way. But in this case, as you can see, the skin tone now is very orange. Now, we don't want to go too high, and also we don't want to go to the positives, otherwise we're adding some green and magentas. We want to go to the negatives, but we don't want to go too high. Just around a minus 5% is going to be just enough to add some orange into our skin tones. Now with YNR Keyword we can see what we're doing and immediately you can see the difference. My skin tone in the original one was very pink, very white and now it has those tan colors in the skin and it's a lot more, well, what we're looking for. These changes that we just did in camera calibration are going to be more noticeable when we apply it to maybe someone that has a more of a, a brownish skin tone. Now next we're going to go down to HSL. Now HSL is a great tool because it allows us to change the colors, whether it be in their hue, in saturation, or how bright or dark they are. So we're going to start off with the hue. Now here we don't want to move the reds, the oranges, or the magentas. These three colors are going to be the ones that alter the skin tones. And we already worked quite hard to get the skin tones in camera calibration. So we're going to leave them at zero and not tamper with. We're going to start off with the yellows and the greens and the aquas. These three will control a lot of the greens in the plants at the background. So we're going to start off by reducing the yellows to the negatives. We don't want to go to the positives, otherwise they turn towards the emeralds. We want to go to the negatives, something around the minus 76% I'm going to go with. Then the greens as well, we don't want to go to the emeralds or to the cool tones. We want to go to the warmer tones just as well, maybe around the minus 70, in this case minus 67. Then the aquas again control some of the greens as well. So I'm going to go to the negatives once again around the minus 60. Now this is going to be enough for the hue, we're going to go to the saturation and here basically we want to desaturate basically every single color bar the warm tones. So in this case red, orange, I'm not going to move them, neither magenta, purple, I'm going to go to minus negative, we don't see any purple in his images. Then the blues as well, remember they were highly desaturated in his normal images, so around the minus 75 is going to be just a midpoint that I like to work with. Then the greens, again we're going to desaturate them once again and also the yellows around the minus 50. Now with Y on our keyboard, we can see the before and after, and immediately you can see how the image is a lot more desaturated and the greens are a lot more warm. Now, this image is a bit weird, so let's save this preset and see how it performs in another image and see if we have to modify some of the settings and update the preset. So I'm gonna to go to the left panel over here, hit the plus sign under presets, and we're gonna hit create preset. Now here we're going to name it, and remember that white balancing, exposure, contrast, we don't like to mark them, so they're at zero. Lens corrections, transform, effects in this case, all of them are going to be unchecked. So we're going to hit create. Okay, so here I have this image of myself just in very vivid and very vibrant greens in spring. So let's apply the preset. As you can see, I've already added it into the AI preset pack. Alex Pantella, let's see the before and after, and here we have it. As we can see, the greens, well, they're very similar to the style of Alex Pantella, uh, very warm, very desaturated. I think we accomplished the greens quite nicely. Then we can see that the highlights are a bit dimmed down compared to the original one. We can see there's less overexposure. And then the blacks, they're faded out. It's looking quite nice. Now let's see it in a portrait maybe to see what happens with the skin tones in particular. So here I have a portrait of my friend Kevin when we were hiking a mountain. So let's apply the preset, Alex Pantella. And it's looking quite nice. First of all, immediately you can see how the greens are desaturated and more warm than in the original. The blues are almost gone. That was something that we had in mind. And also the skin is a lot more tan. Yeah, it's looking quite nice. Very similar to what we saw in the examples. How about over here of this tree? Is this, this is a very similar image to one, the ones that we just analyzed. That's why I picked it. So let's apply the preset. And as you can see in this case, our image is a bit dark. So what I like to do is now go to our corrections, uh, exposure and contrast that we didn't add to the preset, which are at zero. This is just perfect and just add a bit more exposure to the image. And now we can see that those greens are very desaturated, more towards the warm tones. And also in particular, look at the dark parts of the image, how in the original we have pure blacks. And now in the new one, we have faded blacks. That was something that we had in our checklist to do. Lastly, let's see this image of my dog Lupita and let's apply the preset maybe add a bit more exposure, and it's looking very nice. I, I really like this preset, how it's working. Immediately you can see how the blue on her fur is just basically gone. And one thing that you have to keep in mind is that you can always add some temperature to make the image a lot more warm or a lot more cool. So for example, in this case, if I wanted it to fit within his feet, I would add just a bit more temperature to the image, not too much, just add a bit more, 
just to make the image a lot more warm a lot more calid. Yeah, it's looking quite nice. Okay, now I selected this image that I took in Havar, Croatia. Now let's apply the preset and see how the blues are completely gone and create the little variant in case you want to apply this preset to some scenario around a beach or maybe around the lake or something, some place that has a lot of blues. So first of all, let's see Pantella. Let's apply it, Alex Pantella. And I mean, you can see it's basically black and white. It looks horrible. What we're going to do right now is just a little modification. I'm going to go to HSL in saturation and just reduce the saturation that we added into the aquas. Think around the minus 35% is going to be just perfect and do the same with the blues and now we've brought them back just a bit just add a bit more exposure and if you want you can add some temperature into your image depending on your needs but it's looking just fine it's just the same preset with a little alteration to make it uh, useful for other types of photography so I'm going to save this one as well so let's see the difference between the two presets for example I have this little image that I took in Mazunte in Oaxaca Mexico so let's apply first of all Alex Pantella the original one and immediately you can see how the skin tone is a lot more orange a lot more tan a lot more brown but the background is completely gone the blues are basically disappeared on this image if we apply Alex Pantella blue now we can see how the blue is returned just a bit so this preset is a bit more useful than the original one finally we have this portrait of my friend Duraznos when we were out shooting let's apply Alex Pantella the original and it's a very dramatic style for this image in particular you can see how the greens are basically gone compared to the original one a lot more yellow the blue in the background is gone but also the highlights are reduced and the skin tones are a lot more tan and orange than in the original one but then we can apply obviously the blue one to make the image a bit more natural in terms of the blue in the sky. So creators, I just added these two presets into the Edit Like Preset Pack V2 and the Edit Like LUT Pack V2. So you can apply these same edits into your video as well. So if you're interested, you can check it in my shop up here. There's also my preset packs that I use every single day for my photography and my LUT packs. I'll be very thankful if you can support me in that manner. If not, just give it a like. I'm Tony Fuentes, cheers to all of you, and I'll see you in the next one.